Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab Series tech video here. Uh, in this video, we're going to have a little bit of fun. We're actually going to create a Nextcloud server in this video. I figured it's kind of to the point where, you know, if you've ever used like Dropbox or like Google Drive, you're like, man, I wish I could like store so much more. And now that you have like a Home Lab, you probably have a lot more storage than that, you know, like 15 gigs or whatever um, Google Drive offers for free so that you can actually now put in your home lab so you have a second place of location for backup. So in this video, we're going to go through how to set up Nextcloud how, and, and download the uh, interface on your Windows desktop to kind of use it like how you would use Dropbox essentially. So this video is also sponsored by me, myself and I. So if you enjoy this content, want to send me some free hardware or you want to sponsor me for something else, send me an email in the description below. So, all right, let's get started guys. Okay, so we created a Nextcloud server. So we, I, I already created the base VM of it. Um, so we can SSH to it, 19135. We'll also actually add that to, to our DNS here so that we can actually resolve it via DNS name later. So we'll go to our zone, open web IDE. We'll name it Nextcloud. Uh, 136, there we go. Make sure you update the serial number and then commit next cloud, commit to main. Okay, so that will run. So first thing, we can actually open two terminal windows here and log into both the sessions actually, um, because we're going to be installing software and doing other things. So we're gonna try to do them both at the same time. Um, oh, I signed vault one in here, 36. All right. And if you haven't seen, you should go check out my vault warden video also. Um, it was just the video released right before this one. So it's a pretty nice video. Having a, an on-prem password manager is pretty nice, especially when you hear about all the cloud, um, you know, password managers always being hacked or data being stolen. So, okay, so we have Nextcloud. So the first thing we need to do with Nextcloud is we're gonna do the Docker version of Nextcloud. So we're gonna install Docker again. Uh, if you're bored of me installing Docker, let me know and I can always skip this step in my videos, but it's always kind of fun to type it all out actually. One of these days I will mess up typing that out and I'm gonna be very sad. So with that, we will create a Docker Compose file also. Um, and we're gonna actually follow the Docker Compose file that very similarly to Nextcloud Docker that is actually in their documentation. Um, I have a, a copy of it with some added values, but essentially I just went through this documentation and there is this version right here that I essentially use, but I populated the password stuff already and everything. So we're gonna just use that, but essentially you can come out here and on Nextcloud, um, the Docker Hub, grab that, and that is the Docker file I'm essentially using. So nothing too fancy. So you can see that I have pretty much the exact same thing. Um, the volumes, we got Nextcloud DB, we got, we're gonna create the volume data DB and we're gonna create the volume data Nextcloud. So where our next cloud files were located, where the DB files will be located. Um, I also created temporary passwords. You should never share these passwords out, um, but these are just temporary for just showing purposes here. So my MySQL root password is, you know, next cloud MySQL root. My MySQL password for next cloud is next cloud MySQL. Now, the thing that you need to know is these need to be the same. So the password database and user, they actually need to be the same. Otherwise you are gonna run into an issue. Okay, so, and oh, we'll, we'll save that. Um, so as we were saying, we need to actually make the directories data next cloud and make directories data um, DB so that they actually link together correctly. All right, so we've got Docker um, installed. So let's start Docker. Uh, docker, enable docker. 
And then what we will have here, um, we need to also install Docker Compose because we're using a Docker Compose file. So we will go to get the GitHub link for their release, download it, create create the binary, and make sure that Docker Compose is executable. That's what the chmod, it changes the permission, plus x is executable, and we want to make sure it's executable. So now you can just type in Docker Compose, and we can do version, and it actually shows the correct version. Okay, so next thing here, um, so we got we got that installed. What we'll want to do is actually log into our CA server. We'll want to create the cert for it um, because we want to do everything HTTPS. Um, so let's see, root next cloud. Okay, so step CA certificate next cloud dot dragon dot local. Then you need the cert next cloud cloud.dragon.local.cert, and then you need the key. Now you need the password to this. Now in our previous video, you would be able to type, go to your Vault Warden and log in and grab the password here. And you can see that's our CA password. So copy, paste, and there we go. Files have been created. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing that we did in our previous video with Vault Warden. We're actually gonna to just put it in the index location of this. So let's copy this, um, copy these files, and put them in Nextcloud. Oh. Either I don't have DNS set up on this box correctly, or um, that doesn't resolve, so give me one second. <laughs> I probably just don't have DNS set up correctly on this box. Which is fine. Okay, so we have next cloud over here. We got the keys. So if you remember correctly, we need to actually create the directory um, for Nginx. Uh, so make directory p. Etsy, PKI, Nginx, and private. So we're going to move the next cloud assert over to Etsy, PKI, Nginx, and then move the key to Etsy, PKI, Nginx, private. So now you should be able to go PKI, Nginx. You can see that in the private, there's that in the directory there is the cert so we can now install nginx also let's install that okay so we have nginx installed so sys um what is it uh etsy nginx nginx configuration so we'll go back to the TLS section. So we'll delete all these comments here. But remember to keep the top one. We'll update the key and the cert. So next cloud dragon local. Next cloud dragon local. And then we need to make sure we do the proxy pass correctly here. So let me just double check the formatting for what it should look like. Yep, okay, I see it. Proxy pass HTTP. And we're gonna just go back to 8080 because that's how we have it in the docs also. Okay, so now that is added. Um, so we'll restart Nginx. Nginx. We all, um, now, now, now that that's all set up, we'll go to Docker Compose up. So we will actually start the database with the app. It's gonna download, shouldn't hopefully take too long. And then we'll actually need to edit some files before we actually like get, get it to work because 
it will have some weird HTTP hardcoded things and won't and won't redirect everything correctly. So we need to edit a few things. So waiting for this to finish extracting and pulling. All right, almost there. Running network. Okay, everything's created. So now, if you go to your data directory, um, both the DB and the next cloud directory should now be populated. In which, the, if, if this is populated, the app will actually, whenever you repo, will use this config. So the the one thing that we actually need to do here um, is actually update the config. Oh, it didn't actually populate the config, which is interesting. Um, so let's go to the web page because I think maybe we have to go to the web page first. Next cloud drag local. Okay, so you might actually have to go to the web page first. So we'll create an admin account. So create your admin account, name it whatever you want, install. This is why I expected to error because this is where I aired last time for me too. And then we can update the config. So I'm hoping there should be now a config that pops up. Yeah, yeah config.php. Um, yeah, so we'll skip. And then this will actually redirect to localhost 8080, which is not what we want. So now that that is created, we will actually edit the config.php. Um, the first thing that we'll need to do is in this top array part, um, and let me just double check where I put it at the very top, actually. So here we're going to set the trusted proxies and we're going to set that to the server IP. Uh, so in this case, the server IP is 136. Then we'll set the overwrite host, overwrite host equals and then it's just next cloud dot dragon dot local and then the overwrite protocol because it, it, it redirected back to http and we don't have http working here because we don't want it equals https overwrite protocol okay so that looks all good then we need to update these down here also um so in this case, this trusted domain is just going to be nextcloud.dragon.local. And then this is going to be the client URL, also HTTPS, nextcloud.dragon.local. Okay, so once you have all those, you should be able to actually um, do a docker compose down to stop everything and then docker compose back up. You can also do docker compose restart too, but. All right, so now we should log in. And now you have installed Nextcloud, which is really essentially just like, um, Dropbox or like Google Drive. It's a little bit different of an interface, but essentially you can get the same feel at the end of the day. You can upload files, you can drag files. There's these default files that are already on here. Um, so like you can upload a file, create a new folder, do other things. Um, there really isn't like too much in here that you need to really learn per se. <laughs> um, it's really kind of just all the exact same. Um, Next cloud um, desktop client. Now, if you want a desktop client, um, this is also the other thing that you can do too, um, because this is kind of nice where you don't have to use the web GUI. You can just install the client and then you essentially can just drag and drop files into it and then it'll sync up to that next cloud. So we'll install the client here real quick and I'll show you, um, you know, creating a new file, deleting a file and, and that it syncs. So we'll launch it. Um, you don't have to restart, but you, you can restart. In this case, I'm not going to restart, um, but you can. So in here, now you should be able to type HTTPX next cloud. Open the browser, 
give you the security warning. Do you really want to sign in as this? Yes, log in. Don't show. Uh, Microsoft Edge. <laughs> um, well, this should just be admin. Yep, currently logged as an admin. Grant access. Okay, client should be done. Now it's connected. Then you can choose choose everything that you want to decide. So in this case, my Nextcloud server has 65 gigs free. It depends on how much you allocate to the VM. If you wanted like two terabytes free and you you put you have two terabytes free for your virtual machine, it would it would do it right. Um, in this case, I only have 65 gigs free. No biggie, right? Um, Actually, that's 65 gigs on my VM. Um, you also want to make sure that there's enough sites um, on your on your server too. I think the server actually might only have like 40 gigs free. Um, but you can decide if you want to synchronize everything or ask when you sync, choose what to sync. Um, this is kind of all up to you. In this case, we're just going to synchronize everything from the server. We'll continue. You can see that it will go through and sync the current files that are currently there. Um, so you can actually open the, the directory. So this is like your Dropbox directory essentially, um, but it's the next cloud. So say for example, you wanted to delete these files. They, it will actually go through here, sync the deletes, you deleted this, and then you would see in here that the files have been deleted. Um, if you wanted to create new files, um, oh, can I actually just create a new file? Yeah, text document. This is a cool file. You can see that. Oh, it was because I was still writing it. That's that's why there was a, a sync activity. Um, but it should. You we need new text document. Um, now it should say in here. If you reload this, new text document. This is a cool text file. So um, essentially, if you put it in here, it will eventually sync or desync. Um, so just like your normal kind of Dropbox or Google Drive and how you want to use it. So there you go, guys. That is how you set up a Nextcloud. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.